So we welcome you to the Church of Restoration. It's Women's Month. We want to wish you a blessed Women's Day um, all the way from Cape Town, Branch, um, in South Africa. And we are so happy to have with us tonight some powerful women of God, powerful women of influence. Um, and we are here to add value to your life. And so I'm going to introduce the panel to you tonight. Starting with Dr. Esther Nigel Saunders, all the way from Helderberg, Cape Town, a specialist at Helderberg Hospital, a minister of the gospel, extensively involved in missions in Africa, and also the mother to my beautiful grandson. So we welcome Dr. Esther Naidu. Next on, we move, we're move. welcoming um, Anya Kovacs, originally all the way from coming from Hungary and extensively involved in running business and entrepreneurship um, in England and in, um, in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, she's done an enormous amount of work. Uh, she's a corset maker and photographer based in Cape Town, who loves working with women of all shapes and sizes using traditional corsetry and her camera. Uh, Anya helps women see the beauty in themselves and level up their confidence. So we welcome Anya this evening. Uh, joining us also all the way from Johannesburg is Charisma Hanukom. Everyone knows her from Joyous Celebration. And recently, um, you know, she's a psalmist, so she has um, done quite a bit of uh, solo music as well. Running her own business, entrepreneur, uh, a go-getter, might I add as well. And uh, such an inspiration to many women. We welcome you this evening. And um, I trust that everyone watching will be blessed by all the e input that these women have to give. So I'm going to hand over to each person and every woman and just to introduce themselves and just, ex uh, just share from your industry uh, and give us some value, uh, especially during this COVID uh, epidemic. This is a pandemic that uh, has really uh, challenged us as women. It has also uh, put so much uh, stumbling blocks in the, in, in the lives of women across the globe and in our really coming closer home, in our country, in our communities. It has taken a toll on so, so many many of us so we're here to add value we'd like to share from our industries what the important role for women to stand up at such a time as this i'm going to hand over to dr naidu first and we'll take uh, we'll take a look at the others a little bit later okay hi good evening everybody can i just see a wave if you're there <laughs> cool okay so um my profession as my mom introduced, so I'm a family physician at Haldeberg Hospital. Uh, so I actually run the obstetric and gynecology department. So I'm quite involved in women's health and women's care. Um, so that's quite exciting for me. So I've always been passionate about that. Um, so this pandemic for me was a blow as a healthcare worker. Um, so as a healthcare worker, you're very focused on science and you're very focused on what you know and what the books say and what you are taught at university and the pandemic was a huge blow for the medical profession because it's completely new so it's a new monster that we didn't know how to treat um, and so while you saw the public getting quite anxious and they were quite fearful and scared and didn't know what was going on, for us as medical professionals, we too were quite anxious and even fearful at times. Um, you didn't know if you were going to be okay. You didn't know if you yourself were going to contract the virus. You didn't know if you'd bring it home to your family, um, to your loved ones. And you also didn't know what effects it would have long term. Um, so it really was quite something new for all of us to experience together as a country and as a world. Um, for me personally, as a doctor, um, the coronavirus was something that I didn't initially, I wasn't on the front line until a few weeks, actually a month into the pandemic raging in South Africa. Um, so I sort of had a backseat look at what was happening and then actually I had to get actively involved. Um, for me, the isolation was something I wasn't used to. So for me, when I'm afraid or scared or uncertain, I turn to my family, I turn to my church, I turn to my loved ones. And because it was a pandemic and we were under lockdown, you couldn't do that. You were quite isolated and alone. Um, you'd come home and you'd be with your family and you're a little bit scared and anxious to kiss your husband and your son. Um, and these are all things you had to actually deal with. 
Um, so as you obviously know, the coronavirus is a virus that attacks your respiratory system, so your lungs majorly. Um, and for most people, thankfully, you get a mild cold or flu. So you feel quite terrible, but you're actually okay. But it's for those that the virus affects quite intensely um, that they are the ones that we see on the television going on ventilators, really succumbing to the illness. Um, and up until today, there is no cure. Okay, there is no medical treatment that we know that works except for supportive care. So what does this mean for us as doctors? It means that we question, why did you become a doctor? So even though we work with HIV and TB every day, your life isn't really at risk. Um, this was something that was looking you in the face, like somebody standing with a handgun saying, hands up, you know, and you need to actually face it head on. Um, so it really got you to look introspectively at yourself as to why did I actually start doing medicine? Why did I become a doctor? Um, did I do this for the money and the fame, which there isn't a lot of? Um, or did I actually do this because I love helping people? So it's a little bit nostalgic. Um, but I actually, my mom doesn't even know, but in the first few weeks of the pandemic, I came home the one day and I actually said to my husband, so what if I get this virus and I succumb, I die? And my husband's very like strict about the Bible. And he was like, well, the Bible says that by stripes you are healed. So I had to actually just say, fear, hold up. We serve a great Jesus. So even as a yeah. medical professional with the insights and the knowledge that we have, Jesus was still in the background and had to come to the forefront to control our fear and anxiety. Um, so for me personally, the biggest thing was just leaning on my faith. And I think for a lot of healthcare workers, as you see all across the world, they've turned to Jesus. They've turned to a God, their faith. And for us, the Bible is our source of that faith, the word of God. And so the Bible says that God is the author of our faith, but he's also the author of our peace. So in the midst of a pandemic and in the midst of things really raging around us, it was really just finding that inner peace in Jesus. Um, so where medicine con is concerned, um, stay at home if you can. Hence, we're having a Zoom meeting. Um, wash your hands, wear a mask, practice all the rules of social distancing. But really, as a person and as a woman, having many roles, being a mother, being a professional, being a wife, you have to keep yourself and your family safe. But that's not only physically, but mentally, spiritually, and so forth. So um, for me, it was really just leaning into Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, and just before we move on to Cholo Felo, um, you know, I just can I just come in there and, and just ask you a question? How did you maintain the balance between knowing that this virus was actually real and focus, like you were saying, oh, uh, Deacon Jared came and your husband came and said, you know, um, God is your healer, and you know, because sometimes we over spiritualize things yeah. and sometimes we under spiritualize things. So, how did you maintain the balance? So initially, we were quite bombarded with images. So the images were mostly of the UK and the States. And basically, you just saw this pandemonium. So it looked like a really bad horror movie of hospitals just being overrun with people, people being really sick, people dying. And so that was quite overwhelming. Um, so on our hospital uh, management group, there were multiple groups created. And so at any given time during the day or night, you get like, 10, 20, 30 messages telling you about coronavirus and how it's going to kill you. So it became very overwhelming, um, even as just a medical professional. And at some point, I had to say enough and sort of be like, from eight to four, I am a doctor and I get all the information that I need to process. But after four o'clock and on the weekends, I need to sort of shut that down and separate myself from all of that noise and sort of just then turn to Jesus, turn to my prayer time, turn to my parents and my family, um, and even turn to my husband. So it was literally separating myself um, from that, which is not always easy. So it sounds easy now, um, but it was quite difficult at the time. And over now, and we want to also welcome uh, Cholo Telo Motsiki, all the way from Kyobuk once again, only the owner uh, of the Kasi Kutcher. Uh, she also works as a software, uh, software engineer, 
um, a mother of two, married to um, a, brief, a fantastic uh, husband. Uh, classic is a side hustle and sometimes a struggle to keep the balance in her future plans as uh, she plans to grow the company to a company such as Zara, very famous, my favorite show. Um, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, aside, wow. from brand, aside from your brand, <laughs> you want to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> business is a clothing range with more interest on African body shapes, and she makes day to day work wear and special event wear. Bring us back to you know, we had a look at the, the whole medical aspect. Bring us into bring us back to our day to day life. Um, you know, in the pandemic, both of us lived in our pajamas. Today, we are at level two, you know, we're still tussling between with PJs and like now in our slippers. That's mm -hmm. been, been a mindset change. It's been um, totally different. Speak to us from a, a fashion aspect. Speak to us from an entrepreneurial aspect. You know, how can we add value? Um, yeah, speak to us. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you very much um, for the invite, Ikshila. I'm very honored. And um, like you said, I run my full, I have a full-time job and I also have a business. To be honest, for me, when the president announced that um, we're going to level five and we would be allowed to work at home and... For me, the only sad thing that, that, that I, I really am sad about is that there are people who died during this phase. Yeah. But I always say to my friends, you know what, for me, if people didn't die, if people didn't lose jobs, I personally, I, I got the free time that, I've ne that I'll never had. And when this virus, when the, the lockdown started and when we were allowed to work from home. For me, I just made a conscious decision to say, I'm going to use this time to my best uh, that I can. I will never have this free time ever in my life. I will never have to work from home because at least in Joburg, you're wasting around two hours on the road daily, which, which, which you are having. To, to focus on things that you've been putting aside in your life. And when, the, when, when lockdown started, I jot down things that I've been wanting to do that I never had time to do. And I put all my energy onto it. And on my social media platforms every day, I, I, I said, you know what, I want to be positive despite all the darkness, despite the confusion, the sadness that is happening. I want to be that little light that, that there is hope. Mm. So every day on my post, I always, I made a conscious decision to say, I'm going to encourage women to, to use this time effectively to say, if there's been a passion, there's been a talent that God has been, that has given you, or there's been something that God has been talking to you about, to you about to say do this start a cooking business mm. or baking or whatever that you've been that has yeah. been burning inside of you this is the time for you to to start it because you have the time and and throughout i've been consciously communicating that to my followers to say guys let's let's use this time and like uh, the doctor said that I also, I was following the stats when it started and it was just getting overwhelming to me. I even had that WhatsApp from the government and I stopped when it reached a thousand, I stopped and I don't even know the numbers now where I was sitting because I said, you know what? I don't have control of whether I know or I don't know. I will not be able to change what is happening. All that I can do is to keep on praying, to keep on spreading the word. I even when we when the lockdown started, I gave away free masks to my clients. I saw that. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I, my name. 
you didn't send one to me. <laughs> you will get yours. <laughs> you will get. So for me, it was just to say, you know what? Let us and let us trust God. And for yeah. me, I even have a book that I I never used, and I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Say. It says, let your faith be bigger than your fear. And that is yeah. my journaling. So I started journaling. I, every day I'm, I'm always trying to be positive and to, to share the energy with the followers to say, as much as there's so much happening, let us just trust in God. Let us never forget that who God is. Yeah. You know, and, and for me, that was a message that was what I... I through my clothing, giving women confidence and, and saying, you know what, it might be tough. Be good, look good, and go there and occupy your space with confidence. Yeah, wonderful. And so, so I'm going to ask a question. They're just coming in with regards to, you know, I, I watched your page and I always follow your designs. And so we've seen that quite in the lockdown, you've increased a lot of your, your products and you've increased quite a bit of your designs as well. Would you say it's because you naturally had more time on your hands or did you have, where did your inspiration come from? Was it the main, purely a time thing or... What was that? Yes. For me, it was free time, to be honest. And most the shops that I go to, they were empty. And um, what I did was I would go first thing in the morning. And I, I, I bought a lot of fabric. So we, I tried to minimize going out unnecessarily. And you know, one thing that, that, that brought tears to my eyes, one of because I don't have my own factory. There's a sales provider that I use. Mm. And she said to me on level four, I think she said to me, you know, Tulu, um, if it wasn't for your business, I don't know what I would be eating. And my assistant, what would they be eating? You pushing and not uh, letting this darkness occupy you. You pushing your business even during lockdown, you paid my rent. You put food in my table, we are able to eat because of what you, the decision that you took. And for me, it was because I'm, I'm always praying to God today to say, God, use me, use my talent to impact people positively. That's all that I want to do. Yes. To use the gift yes. that you've given me to, to help. And for me, it was just that I was time to say, you know what, whatever that you've been praying for, that is what is happening. Yeah, that's so powerful. Thank you so much. Wow, is thank there any you. Just one questions or comments, please feel free. If not, we're going to move on to um, Charisma Hanakum, all the way from Joburg. Once again, we welcome you, a psalmist, worshiper, and a minister of the gospel. Um, you know, uh, such an honor to have you with us and you know things you've been between Cape Town and Joburg and I think you're back in Joburg now again, you've been living up on that side. Uh, can you speak to us this, uh, this evening and you know just encourage the woman sitting at home that can't look to the right, can't look to the left, doesn't know if they're coming or going, what, what, is, what has kept you going during the lockdown charisma? First of all, thank you so much, Pastor Bev, for this opportunity. I want to also thank the church board and all the ladies and all the organizers that have organized this event. I think this is a beautiful moment, and I think this information is what is relevant and what we need in this time. It's a difficult time, but we rise above everything because we've got God on our side. And that is, that is what kept me going, is knowing that I'm a child of God and I'm not a slave of fear. And uh, that I walk in all authority over whatever schemes and attacks and, and plans the enemy has for me. I'm victorious. So um, thank you so much once again. God bless you. And you may, may you just increase your capacity because you are blessing in my life and in so many other women. And may he just keep on blessing you. So thank you so much. And to all the ladies on the platform, it is an honor to meet you all. Um, and it's divine. And I believe this is God's plan and, and, and will for, for, for our lives. So, so I'm Charisma. I'm a worshiper at heart. Um, I'm not an entertainer. I think, Pastor Bev, you know me. I love uh, worship 
worshiping God because it's a lifestyle. It's not something that you're musically inclined to do or you have the ability vocally, but it's something you live on a daily basis. And I think that is what we've been created to do. And I think there's a song that Fred Hammond sings that sings that we've been created to worship God. Now, what is worship? Worship is a sacrifice. It's not a song. It's not music. It's a sacrifice on a daily basis. When you wake up in the morning, what is your sacrifice? What are you offering to God? Is, is your life uh, revealing the presence, the glory of God? And especially in this time, I cannot go on a daily basis without worshiping God, without saying, Lord, I'm laying myself on the altar of sacrifice. Because we can do a lot with our physical bodies, but when it comes to the spiritual things, it is very important that we are connected to a higher grace, to a higher power, which is God. And the Bible says that, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by the spirit of God. We are spiritual beings. We, don't, we live on this earth, but we are not of this earth. We live in a high place, which is heaven. And when we worship God, you know, we, we, we tap into something that is in the supernatural. It's not something you can see, but it's a supernatural power which we tap into. And that is how manifestations, revelations, and all of these things happen. So... I don't want to go. I don't want to go too deep, but I just wanted to give you a kind of a, a, a rundown of who I am. I'm charisma. I love God. Um, I'm originally from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I um, I just love God, and um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm part of a, uh, a foundation called Rio Booth Foundation, where we teach entrepreneurs, especially in the church. Um, those that have businesses in the church and we, we, they know the business side, but now we want to give them the principles of, listen, this is, this is what tithing is. This is what worship is. This is what anointing is. Uh, this is what the word is. All those principles. Yeah. So, so I'm part of that foundation. And also I run my own company, which is the, the production side, also consultate, uh, a consulting uh, company as well, where I consult anything that obviously people would need when it comes to uh, music and, and, and business and all of that. So, so yeah, that is just an introduction of who I am. Um, and I don't want to, I'm not, I don't talk much, <laughs> but um, this, this epidemic has really changed my mindset. I think when you have a, a shift in your mind, uh, um, that's when things happen. And what I've, I've realized is, is what you see uh, is what you, what you will uh, obviously uh, speak and then that will happen. And that is what I've, I've, I've been said, Lord, just, just give me a new mind in this time of, of, of lockdown. I see you more clearly, you know, that I spend more time with you and, 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 and time that when I come out, that those people that, that see me might see God. They not, don't see me, but they must see God because they need God. They don't need me. They, don't, they need God. So, so lockdown has drawn me closer to God in my time with him, in my intimacy with him, drawing from his well. Because we need to be thirsty all the time, not just for success, but to have a hunger and a thirst for the righteousness of God and just to have that that, that worship, that, that, that growth within our spiritual life to say that if I can be strong in my spirit, I can achieve anything. I've been through much in my life, Pastor Bev, um, uh, and, and what kept me going was my spirit, was my worship, was my, my prayer life. And that is what is still uh, continuously happening in my life. Consistency is the key, you know, if you really want to grow. You have to be consistent and you always have to be committed to the things of God. So thank you. Thank you. That is, that is what kept me going. <laughs> It's really yes. powerful. Thank you so much, Charisma. Wow, that is really some powerful things there, some powerful pointers. Thank you so much. Do we have any Thank questions you. for Charisma? Uh, questions or comments before we move on to Anya? No, all, all that I want to say, can I just say something? I, I think um, the country praying, we really saw God. Um, I, I, I know a lot of people died. But the stats were even predicting the worst. And I saw the country coming together and praying and praying and praying. And God was answering. Yeah, no, definite. Yeah. The world, I think, is still shocked that um, our numbers are as low as, as it is. Because you go through the news, it was always saying Africa is going to be the worst. Hmm. 
but yeah. uh, God has just showed up and proved to the world that your stats and me, you know. Yeah, no, definite. Thank you so much. So, and then we're going to move on to the famous Miss Anya Kovacs. Um, really, from a from a entrepreneur point of view. Can you come on board and, and just share with us, you know, things have been tough for business people, for business women especially, um, you know, and, and it goes through all rounds. It's SMEs, it's, it's um, larger companies. Um, but I mean, to the woman running business, Anya, what would you say, you know, you can introduce yourself and then just give us, you know, give us some pointers, speak to us, add some value to us, for us who's running small business, that's um, running homes, same thing as well. You know, speak to us about the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, as um, as we said earlier, my name is Anya Kovac and I have a business called The Velvet Letter. Um, I've been self-employed since 2013 and I make uh, traditional corsets and I'm a photographer. So I studied photography, but I learned to sew from my grandmother. She taught me when I was very small. So part of my, my making is my a lot of my solace in times of stress. Um, I, I go to my sewing machine and my sewing room and that just, that just quiets my mind a lot. So I think um, a lot of the free time that a lot of us have found um, working from home, I've seen a lot of people turn to creative pursuits and I feel like that's very healing because I think, you know, you don't need to do something professionally or do it well for you to benefit out of it. I think creativity is so important to, to all of us. And that's been really great to see people trying these things, whether it's baking banana bread or like painting or, yeah. you know, whatever, um, picking up a needle and a thread. Um, as an entrepreneur, as I mean, so I would be classed as a micro business because it's just you, all my marketing, all my photography, all my design, all my sewing. I do many custom works. I'm not doing production runs. So I'm a really small business and I know a lot of other one woman businesses who have hard by the pandemic. But I think one of the great strengths of small businesses is that it's so much easier for us to pivot what, we're, what our product offering is, how we're delivering that to clients. You know, if you have a big, if you're working for a big business, you've got this big machine to turn that around and to, to redesign those business structures is so hard. Whereas, for instance, I have a friend who teaches dance class and stretching. She was teaching in a studio pretty much full time in the week. And obviously you can't, you know, gyms are closed, dance studios are closed. She's been doing Zoom classes. So I've been doing stretch classes with her twice a week at eight o'clock in the morning on a Monday and a Wednesday since lockdown started. There is no way I've been able to maintain that you know, in yes. my everyday life to, to get up and get in a car and, yes. you know, and do that class. So in that sense, I mean, in her business, obviously it's been very tough, but she's also yeah. opened up to a whole new range of women who wouldn't have been able to access her, um, her services. Before. I think so many businesses going online is amazing. South Africa, we've been kind of behind the curve in terms of online retail, online services. So this is giving us all a, um, a crash course in getting those, you know, those systems up and running and getting websites going and working on our social media. And um, I, I really resonate with what a lot of the other panelists have said in terms of limiting your social media intake, though, as a, particularly as a business person, you know, if you, or if you have to be online or absorbing information in a professional capacity, you really need to hold that space for yourself personally because it's very easy to become overwhelmed and for that to, to drain a lot of your energy in a way that you're not, you're not keeping, you know, it's in your cup and it's not fitting. Yeah. And um, so I think also specifically as, as women, we're used to juggling multiple roles um, in our, yeah. you know, we have personal lives, we have our professional lives, we're juggling a lot of different things. And I think that gives us a lot of skills that, um, that are useful at this time. You know, it might be more intense. You might have your partner and your kids at home. I don't have kids. Um, I see people with, with young kids at home and who are trying to homeschool and keep the kids occupied. And it's, it's intense. And, and I take my hat off to all of those families who are working with those, with those struggles. Um, but I think just to remember that we, you know, you, this is a more intense version of what you've been doing for a long time. And also it's a moment 
pause and acknowledge the work that you have been doing, but you maybe haven't been recognizing yeah. yourself for doing. You know, all of those, all of those home tasks, that homework that you do, you are doing that. You know, you were doing that before, before COVID. And I think it, this is, pandemic has highlighted how draining those things can be and opens a space for us to have discussions around them and how do we cope with them. Um, as um, a lot of you will know, if you, if you work from home, um, entrepreneurship can be a very, very lonely and very isolating space. So if you've been an entrepreneur for a while, you've hopefully already learned to, to find support networks, female entrepreneur Facebook groups, just talking, you know, find, find other people who are running small businesses because you, we're sharing a lot of the same struggles and it can be very, very helpful just to know that you're not the only one going through this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Connecting with other people who, yeah, who are going through the same, the same yeah. emotions. Um, the value can be really tough. I've had friends, I mean, a friend of mine has a gallery and work up um, that mainly caters to tourism, uh, to tourists coming through. I mean, yeah, they shut down slightly before lockdown. Um, but until tourists come back, you know, what is she going to do? She's developed a mask spray for spritz because she's got a little boy. She's got to keep money coming in. So, you know, you, you, you dig into your creativity and find out what else, what, what talents do you have that, that speak to where people are now, people are needing seen an awesome collaboration I'm sure they're more like this but this is just such a wonderful example um, of women working together in, in creativity in their business sense to help in the community so there's an organization called food flow in Cape Town, which is started by two women one of them is a farmer and the other one works in social services they have been gathering donations to buy vegetables and produce fresh produce from local scale farmers and to distribute that to people who are experiencing food insecurity. So that's a really nice model. They've started beyond the Western Cape because it's been so successful. And then they collaborate with an artist, a t-shirt printer, and a, an artist management company to create a range of t-shirts. So the artist designed a beautiful uh, COVID-themed t-shirt. So when you bought a t-shirt, you knew you were paying for one week's worth of vegetables um, for a family in need but you are also supporting the artist who designed the t-shirt, the company that printed the t-shirts wow. um, and the, art, um, the administrators or artist admin. So it's a freelancer who does a lot of this admin for other small scale artists. So we're seeing models like that coming up, which is amazing. So you, you have a really lovely product that is a, a memento, some of the positive things that come out of this time. So I really think reaching out to other entrepreneurs, speaking to people, I'm trying to make a personal connection with people um, so we, and see, you know, how does my, how does my skill set, how does my business connect with your business and how can we um, work together? Um, yeah, that is and, and sorry, one, the one last thing which I know I have, so I think other panelists have referenced is really just to be aware of burnout that, you know, in the ordinary, you know, before times, it was really a, a big thing as an entrepreneur um, to to work, you know, you're hustling, you're wanting to work all the time, you know, it's very easy for your work to get later and later into the evening and into the weekend. Um, and, and I've, I mean, I stopped taking photographs for years because I realized I completely burnt out. I worked myself into the ground and I got to a point where picking up a camera caused me massive anxiety. And so I had to step back from that for a while. It really is essential that we hold some space for ourselves. I do that through meditation. I do daily meditation and breath work. Um, it helps me manage my anxiety. It helps me clear my head. It helps me sleep at night. So, and also through creative pursuits. So as, a, as, a, as any kind of human, I really, I really think something creative that you can have a stab at. Don't worry about doing it well. Don't worry about doing it perfectly. But find creativity in your life. Um, to do for you, not just for work. Yeah, no, that's so important, Anya. And you know, if there's any uh, disciplined person that I know, it is Anya, you know, <laughs> working with you over the past few weeks. You know, mm -hmm. Anya, if, I'm so sorry to share this, Anya, but she even has a block on her phone so that 
You can only go on Instagram once a day or something. You have to show something on Instagram, Anya. And then you said, oh, no, it's the app. It's, it's blocking me out because I, I've got, I'm very stuck with my time, discipline. So she doesn't go on to anything unnecessary within the day because time is like gold. So if there's anyone I know that is extremely disciplined, it's Anya. Really. And that's because I spend too much time on Instagram. So I have to institute something because otherwise I pick up my phone and my hand hits that my thumb hits that icon automatically and I was like nah <laughs> we, I know, we, we need we. that app I have that disease what is I'm gonna, I'm gonna send I'm gonna send the link to Bev it was recommended to me by a friend and it's good I've locked myself out for two days now I can't go on Instagram no I really do need that <laughs> Yeah, so, um, you know, just in closing, um, you know, first, the first thing I would, I'd like to ask, especially to, to all the entrepreneurs, to the woman that is in lockdown now, sitting with all this time on their hands, would you recommend or would you say pursue your dream now, seek God first and then pursue your dream, run that business, pursue the dream that you have had at such a time as this now? I know it's quite a tricky question. Um, and you know, it's obviously based on a lot of markets. What advice would you give to that woman? I think for me, I would say, um, look at what, what is it that, that you've been wanting to do, number one. And it, for me, I always say, if you really, really want to start a business, it must be something that you love. If you don't love it and you're going it in for the money, um, you're going to be frustrated. Look at what, what is it that you do without being paid. You know, there are people who, who will just, like me, I'm always looking at fashion. I've always been into it. If you are that woman that is always cooking in events at home, that means your passion is cooking. If you can find a way to, to get paid for that, do it. Number two, try to investigate as much as we can for online. Because uh, um, at, at this time, it's, it's better to do your business online. And there are a lot of um, courses that are free to teach you how to run your business online. You, there are a lot of podcasts, there's lots of YouTube videos on, on e commerce, on social media marketing. There's a lot of information. Just go out there and look and all that information, but whatever that you do, you must be doing it because you love it, not because you want to make money out of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else that would like to add anything, any different views on that as well? I, I think a small, um, something to think about is that definitely if, you, if you're thinking about starting a business, if you, if, you would, if you would like to work for yourself, if you have that passion and you're wondering whether or not to start doing some of the work now, getting that set up, definitely start because a lot of the lessons in business, you only learn by doing them. You only learn by experience. Uh, Saying of the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the second uh, best time to plant a tree is right now. Um, so, so just start and have a go and, um, and be ready to make some mistakes and roll with things and learn things. And the other thing that I, that I think people should hold in mind when you are looking at making money for something that you're passionate about is that it maybe doesn't need to become your full-time job. Um, that running a business and pursuing a hobby are two separate things and they can work together. Um, that you don't have to, um, you don't have to go full-time, at least certainly not in the beginning. Have a go, see how you feel selling uh, whatever, you know, whether it's cooking, whether it's, um, you know, singing, you know, ease into it. Give yourself time as much as you can to explore the space and, um, and decide whether or not you are passionate about doing it as a business, as you say, or whether or not you would rather keep it as a hobby, something that you do alone, you know, you do at home and for yourself. Um, and, and to try and make that decision consciously because I started my business by accident and so I didn't have a, a lot of direction in terms of where I was going. And then I had to do a lot of business training and backtrack and go, okay, why am I doing this? Why am I in this space and making money out of this? So yeah, try and keep that in the back yeah. of your head. Yeah. Anything from your side, Kalisma? 
Um, uh, I'm I'm a big believer in self um, self care. Uh, as a as an entrepreneur, it's important because especially now with this pandemic, um, you want to take care of your mental health. Um, because if you, as as an entrepreneur, are not healthy in your mind or you don't look after yourself, you can't uh, you know you can't look after your your clients or the people that you work with. I also say this pandemic has taken me back to the drawing board to say that how do I restructure? Um, how do I like? Um, and I said that you have to now, you know, you have to look at this vision board and you have to now say, okay, what have I done is not working. How do I now do it differently? Uh, because lockdown, we're going back. It's not going to be the same. We're in a new normal. And to all the ladies, especially the women entrepreneurs, you have to look after yourself. Um, because as a woman, we have a lot of things we're doing. We're not just, uh, um, you know, working uh, bosses, but we also come home. We have a, a role at home but to look after the family. So we have to look after ourselves. Um, and like, like I said before, you have to have a balance. Um, you have to have a, a, something you believe in. Uh, if it's God, you have to, you know, have, have that. I, I, me personally, I get up early, um, you know, to just have that time with God so that my day can be <laughs> i believe that if you start early like esther you know she got up early so if you start your day early in prayer in worship writing down in your journal get your get your day started right everything during the day will just be be, be awesome uh, so that is what i i want to encourage all the women out there all the entrepreneurs is that believe in what you are doing, focus on the end goal, like have a plan written down. I always say you can dream, but if it's not on paper, if you don't plan, if you don't put action to that, it will not materialize. You have to put it on paper and you have to run run with that action, implement it, you know, execute it. I always say execute, 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 mm -hmm. because you can have a dream and you can, you cannot plan. You'll miss it. You'll miss, you'll miss, um, what you want to do. So yeah, that is just my encouragement to all the women, uh, Pastor Bev. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And then just lastly to Dr. Esther, uh, can you speak to the career woman and the woman at home hanging her washing uh, rushing home from work firstly, hanging her washing, <laughs> cooking her, her, her meal for her family uh, and still wanting to pursue um, the career that she never could pursue, still wanting to pursue the dream that she wanted to pursue and she could never pursue it. It's COVID time now. What would your recommendation be? What would your advice be for this time? So a lot of you touched on the role of a woman. Um, and obviously you've mentioned that you're an entrepreneur, you're a business person, but you also might be an employee or an employer yeah. and you might yeah. be working in a um, very rigid job or a structured job. And then you come home and you have to be a mother, a wife, a worshiper, a leader in your church. And all those roles can also seem overwhelming in a pandemic. I think the pandemic is a very humbling experience because it shows you that you don't always have everything together. Um, and I think the most important thing for me, apart from setting aside, aside time for yourself and time for yourself to recharge with the Lord, um, is also just being open to learning new things and not being so rigid in your structure and your system, but being open to adapt and to be pliable. Um, so when you're coming home and you're really stressed out, it's getting your husband to help you and put the kids in the bath. So it's practical things. It's not just wishy-washy, nice sounding things, hallelujahs and so forth. It's the practical things. Oh, yeah. also, yeah. <laughs> so it would be very unfair for me to not also touch on the fact that at home, it's different now. So where you in the past would go out and maybe shop or your husband would go out with some friends. You are now stuck in a home together. Um, and many for many people, that's a problem. Eh? So I think we need to acknowledge that. And so it is for us as women who are steering our family, the carers of the home, they say the CEOs of the home, to be open to learning a new way of doing things and to be open to being adjustable and malleable and not to be rigid. Um, I also think it's important to maintain a focus on the Lord. So it's very easy to get distracted. Um, so there's financial pressures, there's emotional pressures, 
Um, and there's a lot of pressure at this time now for a lot of families. So I think we sitting here, ladies, are quite fortunate. Um, and we find ourselves, irrespective of our challenges that we are facing, we are in quite a fortunate position to know the Lord and also to have careers that are quite successful. But there are many families and many women who are not as fortunate. And for them, it's even harder to juggle these things that we are talking about, but to then keep a focus on the Lord and to draw strength from Jesus. And like Charisma said, getting up early in the morning. So my mom always teases me. She says, I like to sleep. So I do like to sleep. <laughs> it's also something I work very hard. Um, but also just setting specific time aside to recharge your batteries and to make that a habit in your home. So um, in our home, things are really busy. I have a two-year-old and he's all over the place. So while we were having this meeting now, he's busy screaming in the background of the house because he needs to get out to me now. Um, and that can be quite challenging. And you want to maybe take off your supper and throw the door. But it's to keep yourself in check and know that if you are grounded in certain principles, morals, and in Jesus, that you then do not waver, irrespective of the pandemic and the pressures that you're facing. Um, so my message to women is keep your eyes focused on Jesus um, and be flexible, um, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally also, and be open to learning. Um, we are all learning. So as a doctor, this was quite a humbling experience because you get to a certain point in your career, and I'm quite young still, so I've only been a doctor for 10 years, which is quite young in the profession. Um, but you sort of get to a point where you feel like you know enough or you know it all, um, and it's good to know that you don't. That there's still much room to grow. There's still much room to learn, um, not just in your field, but in so many other areas of your life. So continue learning and just keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Saunders. And, you know, I just want to thank everyone once again for joining us. And, um, you know, I just want to close with a scripture in Ecclesiastes. Uh, chapter 3, it was my husband's favorite scripture. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows that by now. It's to everything there is a season and a time. To every purpose under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. You know, this pandemic has taken the world by storm. It's taken the woman by storm, but all things come to an end. And um, as we're approaching the end of winter, spring is coming up soon. Um, it's the beginning of a new season. And the end and this season it will be ending and changing over to something new. And my encouragement to everyone would be that, you know, this too shall pass. And you know, let's take all this encouragement that we've received from all of these women here tonight. Let's take that. Let's help. Let's allow it to come and take root and hold in our lives so that we can grow from level to level and from strength to strength. And just hold on. Don't give up. God is with you and will carry you. I want to thank the panel tonight. I want to thank you for your presence and thank you for your input. You have certainly added value to so many women's lives. And so God bless you and may he reward you accordingly. To everyone watching, we love you from the Church of Restoration. We hope to see you soon. Stay strong and keep the faith in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.